Alright, on today's episode of Memory Lane, here on Gaming Police Empire, we're going to be playing a little bit of Atari 2600. That Atari 2600 controller can only mean one thing. We'll be playing the Atari 2600. Today, we'll be using the Atari 7800, fully backwards compatible with the 2600. The Atari 7800 was released in 1986. The original 2600 was released back in 1977. The Atari 2600 and 7800 combined sold over 30 million consoles. The Atari 7800 featured a 1.79 MHz CPU, 4 kilobytes of RAM, and the Atari 7800 uses the same two-channel audio chip found inside the Atari 2600. What, what a, a great, great console! console. And today we're going to be taking a look at some bad and good movie games. Let's uh, take a look at the uh, rating system. It's a three-star rating system that we came up with here. One star, two star, three star. Let's go uh, check it out real quick. Memory lane rating system loading. One star rating equals horrible, real bad, trash. Two star rating equals fair, good Randall, worth playing once. 3 star rating equals great, must own, possible hidden gem. Alright, so uh, not only am I going to be rating these games, you guys are going to be rating these games down below. So uh, down below I want to see your list and what your ratings and what do you think about these games. And now uh, let's head over to the Atari 2600 and let's check out some good and bad movie and TV show games and let's see how these games are. All right, here we have Star Wars, The Empire's Strike Back. And uh, right there you have like one of those, I believe those are Skywalkers. I'm not a Star Wars expert, but I tell you what, the label art looks pretty damn awesome. Look at that. That looks pretty cool. I actually like that a lot. Uh, there were several Star Wars games on the Atari 2600. Uh, this is one of them right here. We're going to check it out. And uh, if, if it's, the game is anything like the, uh, the label art, it's going to be awesome. So uh, let's head over to the Atari 2600 and let's check out The Empire Strikes Back. Here we have Star Wars The Empire Strike Back. And uh, if you look at the, uh, the graphics on this, this is actually quite impressive. You actually have one of those Walker mech robots right here and it's actually trying to assault you and uh, you can see right there it actually shot me down that son of a bitch. And you have a little radar on right there on the bottom of the screen that tells you where the walkers are. Now, uh, again, this is uh, quite impressive for back in the uh, early 80s or whenever this game came out. Uh, considering that this is on the Atari 2600, this is actually quite impressive. It's pretty awesome. I would give it a 2 star still. It's not perfect. Uh, but it's definitely not a 1 star. This game would have been awesome to rent back in the day. If you would have walked into a video store and saw the box art, the label art, popped into your Atari 2600, you probably would not be disappointed. This game is actually pretty cool. Alright, here we have Alien for the Atari 2600. Now, based off the Alien movie right there, 20th Century Fox. Now, there's not really that much of a fancy uh, label art here to be seen at all. It's mostly a uh, little image of the actual game right there in the center. And right away you can tell that it's like a Pac-Man ripoff. But is it a good or bad Pac-Man ripoff? Let's head over to the Atari 2600 and let's find out. And here we have Alien for the Atari 2600. And as right away you can see that it's definitely a Pac-Man ripoff. Right down to the sound effects and the map layout. And uh, it's basically the same concept as Pac-Man, except with a twist, you have a weapon you can shoot these aliens with. And you, you know what, this game is actually pretty fun. I like this, this game quite a bit. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play. It, uh, it gives you a really, really good action-packed alternative to Pac-Man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a 3 star. I would highly recommend this. It's actually a pretty decent Atari 2600 game. It's pretty awesome. We're going to be playing some He-Man for the Atari 2600. Here's the uh, Mattel cartridge right here. Uh, nothing really fancy to see here. It's pretty uh, bland, boring looking. 
But here's the uh, the actual box art itself, like the actual box that the cartridge came in. Uh, it looks a lot better than the bland Mattel cartridge, the M Network. Uh, nice looking box, definitely completely different from the cartridge. Uh, let's uh, head over to the Atari 2600 and play a little Masters of the Universe. Hey, man. Alright, here we are with the uh, awesome title screen right here with He Man, Masters of the Universe. Definitely a really awesome title screen. Look at that. Nice details, nice music. And here we are flying around in a uh, starship. I think it's Starship Eternia. Here's a little uh, comic image of what that looks like. You have to try to blow up your enemies, try to avoid being hit by different projectiles. It's a pretty generic space shooter type game. Nothing too fancy to see here. I would give it a 2 star. It's pretty fun. Not a bad He-Man game. It's definitely not bad. But I wouldn't say that it's perfect either. Now, what do you guys think? What would you guys rate Masters of the Universe He-Man on the Atari 2600? And here we have G.I. Joe Cobra Strike. A G.I. Joe game based on, of course, G.I. Joe. And now we have, uh, right away, we have um, the Cobra trying to attack. Pretty cool looking uh, label art right there. We got the G.I. Joe logo right there on top of the star. And uh, I like the border with the snakes going around it. You have the little Cobra looking snakes going around the border right there. Uh, very, very nice label art. I like it a lot. Let's go take a look at this game and let's see if this game is any good. G.I. Joe Cobra Strike. And here we have G.I. Joe Cobra Strike on the Atari 2600, the game right here. And uh, it's a, it appears to be a shooter. And it looks like you have to try to save your G.I. Joes on the bottom. You have a Cobra that's trying to kill everybody. And it, it, it kind of seems like a combination of multiple different types of gameplay. You have like a little paddle thing right there. You have two little turrets that are shooting at the, uh, the actual snake. And uh, this game is okay. It's not bad. It's better than what I thought it would be, but it's still a two-star. I think this would have been a great rental back in the day. What do you guys think? Comment down below and let me know. And here we have Star Wars. Return of the Jedi. Death Star Battle. You know, right away the uh, the label art looks pretty damn awesome. Looks pretty cool. So if you're a Star Wars fan, you'll definitely enjoy looking at that label art. Okay, I'm, not, I'm not a Star Wars expert, so I can't really tell you exactly what's going on there in that picture. But I can tell you what, it looks pretty awesome. So uh, let's head over to the Atari 2600. And let's play some uh, Star Wars Return of the Jedi Death Star Battle. Alright, here we have the game right here for the Atari 2600. Star Wars Death Star Battle. And uh, at first glance, if you look at a screenshot of this game, it actually looks like it's going to be something pretty damn awesome looking. Uh, but once you start playing the game, it's like the complete opposite. I mean, this game is, uh, despite the game looking pretty cool at first, it's quite disappointing when you play it. It's not that fun at all. I, mean, I definitely did not have fun playing this game. For me, it was a one star. There's definitely better Star Wars games on the Atari 2600. Uh, this is definitely bottom of the barrel for me. I would not want to own this game, but how do you guys feel about it? Let me know down below if you like this game. Alright, here we have Frankenstein's Monster. And it's a game that's probably loosely based off uh, various different Frankenstein movies and TV appearances. There's a ton of Frankenstein movies, so who knows. Well, here is the uh, label art right here. You have a bat in the background. You have I believe that might be Frankenstein, I'm not sure, but it's a pretty scary looking thing. And uh, look at that, I don't know exactly what's going on there, but it's uh, pretty scary looking. Some crazy looking stuff, I wonder how the game is. Let's uh, go take a look at this game and let's get scared of Frankenstein. And here we have Frankenstein's monster for the Atari 2600. And I can only think that that's Frankenstein on top and we have to run around and Almost looks like a pitfall type platform. And we have different spiders and different creatures that just come out of nowhere and all kinds of crazy stuff going on here. And it looks like a pack ghost on top. I and mean, what the heck is going on here? 
Lots of uh, random things. And I, I'm guessing that we're supposed to get to the top. Uh, this game is definitely not easy. I would give it two stars. Definitely not, not the greatest. I mean, what would you guys think? What would you guys rate this game? Frankenstein's Monster! And here we have Planet of the Apes for the Atari 2600. And right there on the uh, label art right there, you can see uh, uh, some Planet of the Apes shenanigans. Looks like the apes are choking the crap out of that guy right there. Uh, that's, uh, it looks like straight from the movie. Some nice little illustration right there of some brutality from the apes. The apes are killing that guy. Some of the most barbaric labor I've seen on the Atari 2600. Look at that. And uh, I wonder how this uh, game is going to play out. How is, how is it going to translate to the Atari 2600? Uh, let's head over and uh, let's find out. And here we have the game right here, Planet of the Apes. It's a prototype. And uh, this game right here, you see all the apes are going ape shit. They're running around, going through the woods, trying to kill you. There's a whole bunch of them there. You have to walk around and try to escape. And it, it looks like it's kind of like an early form of an open world type thing. You have to walk around and find different places and all these apes are going wild. They're running wild. You have to cross over the water right there. You can sink in uh, some quicksand. And uh, you can go inside buildings as you can see right there. It's pretty cool. Two star. What do you guys think? I think this would have been a really cool game if it released. Alright, here we have Star Wars The Jedi Arena. For the Atari 2600, and you have like Luke Skywalker right there, uh, right there in the center. Yeah, it's like one of those uh, lightsabers. It's like a, almost looks like a soccer ball. What the hell is that? <laughs> not sure what that is. I'm not a Star Wars expert, but that does look like a soccer ball to me. Like, it's definitely something else, though. Probably it's a Star Wars soccer ball that shoots lightning. Look at that! It shoots like lasers out. All right, let's get ready for some lightsaber ball action on the Atari 2600. And here we have the Atari 2600 Star Wars Jedi Arena. And right away, you get the uh, lightsaber ball action. You got an electric fire laser ball, whatever that is, and you got two guys right there trying to beat their sticks, their lightsaber sticks. And, uh... <laughs> Pretty ridiculous. Uh, this game is uh, not that good. It's, it's supposed to be like a multiplayer, two-player thing, but there is definitely much better games to be played. This is not that good. Dad, this is a one-star for me. And you're better off playing Warlords or Combat or something. Uh, this game is eh, not that good. All right, next up we have Star Wars: The Arcade Game for the Atari 2600. So obviously this was uh, an actual arcade game to the 2600 and I wonder how this will translate to being on the Atari 2600 we have to definitely check this out there's nothing really too fancy to be seen on the label art it's got the uh, Star Wars logo with the arcade game text right there below the actual logo itself now that's pretty much it there's nothing else to be seen so without any further ado let's head over to the Atari 2600 and here we have the game itself, Star Wars The Arcade Game. And then let's check this game out. Let's see how awesome this game is. And uh, right away, uh, we have a like, almost like a first-person perspective type deal going on here. And, and you know, it is, this actually looks pretty impressive. You can see structures and all kinds of stuff, like to the left of you, to the right of you. You can actually see some death from like these pillars, these walls right here. Uh, definitely is really, really crazy stuff for the Atari 2600. This is the Star Wars game to own. Uh, Star Wars, the arcade game. I'm giving it three stars. I like it a lot. I think this is actually one of the most impressive looking games on the Atari 2600. Alright, things are about to get real scary. We have Halloween. For the Atari 2600, this game released, I believe, in 1983. And that's based off the uh, first Halloween movie, and uh, the, the label art here. There might be a few different variations of it. I know this game had reprints and stuff, but this this label art is all over the place. This looks strange, really strange. Not a huge fan of it, but just really, really bizarre. Look at that. Uh, let's head over to the Atari 2600 and let's check out Halloween. And here we have 
Halloween on the Atari 2600 and right away you get the actual Halloween theme song which is really really awesome. And there you are, you can see uh, the actual people from the movie, I forgot, I forget, honestly I forget what their names are, but they're running away from Michael Myers. You can see the little kid right there, yeah, you're, you basically play the uh, the girl, the female in the, in the movie. And you have to try to get the little kid to safety and here comes Michael Myers. And he's gonna chop your head off, and he can chop your head off in this uh, game, by the way. And now, oh, oh my god, there's a good example of it. Oh, what the hell? I mean, well, that didn't turn out so well. I mean, well, this is actually an early example of a horror game done right on a video game. Especially on the Atari 2600. This game was downright scary back in the day, and still is. I mean, you don't know exactly what corner Michael Myers is gonna come out of. He's gonna chop your head off, you have to try to escape. And uh, this game is actually pretty scary, considering it's an Atari 2600 game. They did a great job making this game. This is a really, really awesome horror game on the 2600, probably with the best. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Memory Lane. Stay tuned for more Atari 2600 episodes, NES episodes, Sega Genesis, all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, if you guys enjoyed this format, let me know down below. Do you want to see more ratings on more games? Why don't you give your suggestions down below? I want to know what games you want to see next. What consoles you want to see next. Down below, let me know. And have a great day, and stay tuned for more episodes.